Time for another short video, guys. Uh, for this one, I'm going to kind of go over how I use the actual box extender and the power saver. And this is set up to be very tight. Uh, but so far, I've had no issues whatsoever with it. It does clear everything just fine, especially if you run the wires pretty tight. Now, you'll notice the way that I have everything wired up. Um, and uh, it is a little bit busy in there. But uh, I run just data from the Ghost. I run 12 volt to the ghost so I've got a larger power line going in um, I like to use 14 gauge because I know it's overkill uh, I know it will work in just about every application that I'm going to use it in and uh, it makes me feel better I do not run the power through the ghost because that is a potential weak point if you're running a lot of power there's no need to run the power to your LEDs through the ghost controller so there's you know just no reason to do it so i don't i bypass it it puts less strain on the ghost it runs less of a risk that the ghost were to not be able to handle the power that you're putting through uh, and once again there is absolutely no reason that you have to run your led power through the ghost so i do not uh, but i do run power and ground 12 volt to the ghost data out i run the power up to the power saver I run the power that is going to go to the LEDs up to the power saver, comes back out, and it goes into my three-pin wires here. So these are 12 volt, uh, as it is set up right now. I run the three signal wires, which is a turn signal, a DRL, and a break in this case, because these are for taillights. Uh, generally, if it's headlights, I do both turn signals and the DRL. I also have the party mode wire that runs straight down to the EXT connection on the ghost controller. In this case, because it is taillights, I am doing both turn signals. So you can see I've got a diode pack right there where there's two diodes. Uh, that way the two turn signals cannot feed to each other. So they will not uh, effectively connect to each other and make the left turn signal activate the right turn signal and vice versa uh, but it does come out as a single wire so that means that either turn signal will activate the yellow turn signal wire right there which goes to that so effectively it turns this from a three input to a four input uh, trigger on the ghost control on the power saver itself um, as well as I am using the output uh, which is a low amperage output, so please keep that in mind. It is specifically designed to activate the ghost controller's external, uh, uh, the the extra connector, which in this case is going to be the show modes. Um, but you'll see everything in there, and I will be able to close it up. Not, not easily one-handed, but I will. Uh, one thing I do, I pot these, uh, so I do extend the box size. With a, uh, I use an ultrasonic cutter, but uh, any way that you can use to extend it. And that way the wires can just easily flow right up over top of the connector. Uh, and I can keep everything inside. I cover this with uh, an aluminum tape, which does a really good job at sealing it and making sure that nothing gets out. I will use a, a Gorilla Glue contact adhesive along as a seal. And that works quite well. I also use Gorilla Glue contact adhesive as a seal around the cable gland and in between the wires, so none of the uh, none of the potting compound that I use escapes out. Um, that is how I make my controllers, and it does make it quite slim, quite small. Everything self-contained. Uh, if I am using this for a five volt setup, which this setup will be, the way that I do that, I put a five volt inverter in each light. And the 12 volt outputs uh, will run to each headlight and it will power the inverter as well as anything 12 volts. So I will split it off. Uh, so I will connect both the inverter and 12 volt devices to these powers and grounds. And uh, that way I keep everything nice and simple, not, not too overloaded. Uh, also, 12 volt travels better. Uh, than 5 volt does so you know not only am i reducing it from a five wire setup to a three wire setup 
uh, for power, ground, and data. Um, but it, it also, if you're using thick enough wiring, because that is important, I use 18 gauge, um, it does adequate uh, for every application I've used so far. Um, beyond that, uh, I do, I will make these into two separate connections coming off of here, and I will add a fuse, an uh, inline fuse to the main power line here, uh, as well as uh, ring terminals and things like that. I probably will be offering these controllers pre-assembled and ready to go, potted and everything on the site at some point. But as you can see, there is a heck of a lot involved. Um, I would much rather show you guys how to do it, let you guys save a few bucks and uh, benefit from the compact design. But I will be offering it for people that don't want to mess with it, don't want to have to worry about it, or maybe just would rather have it done by somebody else. It's probably going to be in the $350 to $400 range, but that would include everything you see here. It'll include the braided sleeving on the wires. It will include the fuse holder. It'll include the ring terminals. It'll include um, uh, barrel connectors to go to the lights. You basically will just have outputs that are labeled for your turn signals, your DRLs, uh, your brakes, things like that if they're needed. Um, it'll be a pretty much plug-and-play, ready-to-go controller. All you're going to do is just run your wires into the headlight and connect to the proper connections. So uh, quite a bit involved. That's why the price will be pretty steep, um, just because of the amount of hours that are involved in making it and the amount of components that are involved in making it. Um, but that may happen here in the near future. Um as I, you know, perfect everything, make sure that I'm happy with what I've got. But uh, hopefully this video helps. I didn't want to make it too long, but just a way to kind of explain a little better on the power boxes. Um, just exactly how these extensions can work. Um, and obviously there, there will be uh, four screws included if you buy one from me. Uh, the 3D print file is free on the website. If you look at the Power Saver uh, link, uh, the Power Saver uh, listing on the website, it's at the bottom. There's a click. You can click on the link to actually download the file and print them. Uh, this one is uh, 3D printed on a resin printer, so overall quality is pretty good. I mean, there's a little band on this one, but I'm not too worried about it on this particular build. Um, but uh, as I was dialing in the printer, there was some little, little adjustments that I had to make, but... Uh, for the most part, they are pretty smooth, solid-looking pieces. But uh, hopefully that helps. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.